Good evening. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Richard Ayuadi. In the news this week, as the result in Pennsylvania teeters on a knife edge, everyone is wondering where the votes from Franklin County are. <laughs> <laughs> Five hours into a train journey, two passengers with pre-booked seats are still pretending not to have noticed each other. <laughs> And in Pyongyang, it's a bad first day at work for Kim Jong-un's new chef. <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is a writer, director and producer who created the hit American comedy Veep about a female vice president. Interestingly, America has never had a female president, although now Joe Biden's won. Give it a couple of weeks. <laughs> Please welcome Armando Iannucci. So you're predicting at this point that uh, Joe Biden's won? That's the word on the street. If you've got your ear to the street, then you must be right. That, where else should my ears be? Well, <laughs> They're I well wonder, should you be saying we're not going to have a female VP because uh, President Trump has won, just to cover yourself? We no? don't. I'm not going to cover myself. No, all right. I'm going to say what's going to happen in four years' time and stand by that as well. <laughs> and with Paul tonight is a comedian and writer who stars in her own sitcom, Game Face, where she plays an out-of-work actor. Or, as they're now called during lockdown, an actor. <laughs> Please welcome Roisin Connerty. <laughs> we begin with the bigger news stories of the week, Paul and Roisin. Right. Have a look at these. Oh. No, what's his name? Um... Flag salesman. Yeah. Um, oh, and that's he's the other one. Um, oh, yeah, there's a dog with a ginger wig. Um, <laughs> but now I know where I am. And uh, that's just sexist, isn't it? <laughs> I think they're the bleach boys. <laughs> I see that the one in the middle's really gone for it because he's not wearing any socks. No. Unless, of course, he's wearing a sock that we can't see. <laughs> the secret socks that scoop underneath. Well, you've got your ear to the street. <laughs> this is the news that the old white guy won. <laughs> yep, that, that does cover us, <laughs> um, either way. <laughs> yep, OK. Uh, Biden's probably got it. Ian didn't like that, yourself. Well, that's what the street says. I can't bear the hope, Rasheed. <laughs> I know, I can't. Is. I think none of us can bear the hope. That is a good autobiography <laughs> title, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't written it already, <laughs> please. <laughs> Yeah, there was fantastic footage of a, a group of Trump supporters saying, we've got to stop the count um, in one state, and then immediately they flicked to them saying, we've got to count this up, because yeah. they thought it was their vote. I think over the last four years, a lot of people in America have said, we've got to stop the count. <laughs> 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 but I think the thing is, none of us have got that nice feeling that even if Biden wins, Trump's going. It feels like if you're getting out of a really bad relationship, everyone's like, it's, you're going to be free. And you're like, I'm not, though, am I? He's not going anywhere. He's going to be around. He's going to show up at your work. You know, <laughs> we're not going to have that feeling of, like, ah, we're free, cos we're not. I think Biden's plan is to distract Trump with Pennsylvania so that Trump actually insists on counting all the votes himself, <laughs> which will take four years. <laughs> I mean, he is leaving his four years as gracefully as he entered which is, is pushing it. <laughs> Media outlets were initially reluctant to call the result, um, instead uh, going with Biden on the brink. I actually have a caravan there. <laughs> <laughs> on the night, Trump declared that he'd won, way before any, any of the, the votes were in. He kept saying things like, they're finding votes everywhere, but he made it out like they weren't finding them, they weren't yeah. to be, like they were down on the back of the sofa, or Biden was like, oh, hello, <laughs> another vote. <laughs> Let's take a look. This is a fraud on the American public. This is an embarrassment to our country. We were getting ready to win this election. Frankly, we did win this election. We did win this election. Um, the Trump campaign has filed lawsuits in Pennsylvania, Michigan and Georgia in order to contest the result, despite not having officially lost there yet. <laughs> Other than lawyers, who else is Trump's team trying to get to intervene in the election? God. Yes. Ah, oh, yes. No. Thank you. Yes, oh, God. Really? The lady was doing the... God, oh, you got, yes. you right. got the footage God. of her. Please, make our evening. Trump's spiritual advisor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> incredible, incredible. That's, that's not a full-time job, is it? <laughs> Paula White held a special prayer service oh. on Wednesday. 
Let's look at it. Strike and 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 strike until you have victory. She's praying for the return of her drumstick. Anything you put on the screen right now, we would just be like, yeah, that's probably true. Anything that Trump or any of his team or people do, none of us would be like, I can't believe it. I'd believe it 100%. Yeah, you right, anything. Trump has a singing turtle. I mean, I'm yeah. in. Who's his legal advisor? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I showed something humane, would that surprise you? Yes, uh, it would actually. Yeah. The way you conducted yourself so far. <laughs> <isn't> <laughs> <you know? laughs> Blame the streets, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from Trump, who else was it bad night for? I mean, half the country, more or less, still did vote for him. I mean, whichever way it goes, the, the Senate's still half half. The House of Representatives is only just in favour of the Democrats. So I think they assumed that if you put up any candidate at all against Trump, they would win. Mm. And they have tried this before. <laughs> and again, it failed. <laughs> You're suggesting that they should select someone who people want to vote for. Mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was also a bad night, though, for the pollsters. Ah, oh, no. yes. Yes, yes. yes who predicted a Biden whitewash. One theory as to how the polls got it so wrong is that pollsters armed with clipboards intimidated shy Trump voters. <laughs> Either that or Trump voters armed with automatic rifles intimidated shy <laughs> <laughs> We had that, didn't we, with the... Remember the pollsters when the Conservatives got in and there was the shy Tories came yes. out? People just would just lie rather than be judged. Yeah. I thought it was shy Tories, so I <laughs> signed up. But, uh, <laughs> are horses allowed to vote in the general election? I think in certain states. Certain, yes, there's states in America, yes. And they get one vote per hoof, is the <laughs> campaign in certain counties. <laughs> um, can different hooves vote against one another? Do they you all can get vote? a split horse, yes. yes. <laughs> Um, who put on the best election show? Do you want to see what CNN did? Yes. All right, we got a key race alert right now. Too early to call in these states, including in Ohio. Too early to call in Ohio. 18 electoral votes in Ohio. Too early to call. Too early to call in North Carolina as well. 15 electoral votes in North Carolina. Too early to call. West Virginia, five electoral votes. Too early to call in West Virginia. It was too early for them to broadcast that show. <laughs> <laughs> it was too early for. When I stayed up, it was too early to call for hours and hours, and then I fell asleep. When I woke up, it was too close to call. <laughs> 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 I thought I missed all the good bit. You missed the call. <laughs> Who kept their faith in Trump? Think of some of your favourite UK politicians. Oh, oh, oh Farage. Farage! There we go. <laughs> what did Nigel Farage say American voters would get if they backed Trump? Him. He told ITV News that they'd get Donald Trump with the straight jacket <laughs> removed. <laughs> oh if he's God. been in a straight jacket <laughs> yeah. so far, I don't think we should take it off. <laughs> Which other politician had a surprising cameo on election night? Cummings, I imagine. He's not out and about. Get arrested. <laughs> Was it Theresa May? Was it? Yes. In a sense. <laughs> Let's see the clip to explain. At a time when we're facing an unprecedented challenge from both China and Russia. Before I ask you a next question, let me just put up uh, a tweet that uh, Margaret Thatcher uh, has just uh, put out, because uh, uh, Theresa May, sorry... Uh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> There's no such thing as society. Don't at me. <laughs> yes. Gosh, that's a spooky thought, isn't it? She's yeah. tweeting from beyond the grave. Oh, yeah. mm. So they have social media in... <laughs> or, hell, or, or wherever or you wherever. choose to assume that Horsham. Margaret Thatcher is. Could be purgatory. Could be purgatory. Yeah. No, that was when she was here. OK. Um, <laughs> OK. Yeah. This is the delayed result of the US election, with the final outcome still in the balance. Trump made a controversial speech unleashing dark and destructive forces, or as they're also known, lawyers. <laughs> Joe Biden knows that if he's to succeed as president, he's going to need a powerful stimulus package, which is what he calls his defibrillator. <laughs> <laughs> Many believe that as president, Joe Biden can help bring Americans together as they attend his funeral in January. He is super old. <laughs> Political scientists agree that the only constitutionally guaranteed way to get Donald Trump out of the White House is to hand him a spacesuit and say, congratulations, you've just been elected king of the galaxy. <laughs> Joe Biden, it's crystal clear on what his priorities would be as president. Get America out of Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> Make peace with the Confederacy and beat the Soviet Union to the moon. <laughs> I've got to beat. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Armando, take a look at this. Do I screw things up in here? This is where I go. 
Oh, he's bricking it. <laughs> oh, yes, they're changing the slogan, eat out to help the virus it's out. It's spreading. Look, at it's spreading with his hands. Boris hitting the target. Oh, no. He's... Whoever I get with this arrow gets a PPE contract. <laughs> <laughs> Is the answer we're now in lockdown again? Yes, lockdown two. Yes. Boris Johnson was shown all sorts of worrying figures showing Keir Starmer ahead, and he thought, we've, we've, got, to, we've got to do this. Yep. It would be morally wrong That's not right. to. And he'd given a clue that he was going to change his mind because he'd said, there is no way yep. we're going to have a national lockdown. Yep. So most of us just stocked up, <laughs> went and bought more food. This is lockdown too. Uh, this is terrible news for the hospitality sector. And everyone. Yes. We will go stay inside. Yeah. And only non-essential shops are to close, which I noticed include bookshops. Nothing like a government with its priorities right. <laughs> yes, that is an indulgence reading. It is. People get ideas. <laughs> <laughs> but Weatherspoons, mm. as ever, are leading the way. They're the innovators in this. Uh, what do they start to do over the last few days before lockdown? Uh, they're giving the booze away because they don't want to waste it. 99p a pint, Ian, <laughs> at Weatherspoons. See you there. <laughs> Um, Where do you think I've been the last two days? Exactly. <laughs> when you say, I haven't slept. <laughs> watching the news. Dance I've seen you on that news. sticky carpet rolling around. <laughs> we're, we're allowed... It's not as severe as the first one. We're allowed out on the streets and stuff. Yeah. Your favourite streets? Place. Yes. <laughs> get your ear out That's there. That's where I get my fucking news, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Deprive me of the street. It's like TJ Hooker. How? I can't, I can't be behind a desk. I need to be out in the field. <laughs> The first lockdown must have been so hard for you. Mm. T.J. Hooker. <laughs> that's right, that's a ref I'm bringing, Paul. I've been locked down since 1987. <laughs> of my own volition. I've just come out and those are the refs I'm bringing. <laughs> Romano's had a terrible time. Magnum P.I. That's right. <laughs> Wait till nine next five jokes about Heather Lockyer. <laughs> T.J. Hooker. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> you remember... No, unbelievable. Mm. But no, Heather Lockyer. Yes. Heather Lockyer. Locklear? Very Lockyer. beautiful. Have a look, Cleo. Yeah. Have a look, Cleo. Dynasty. Lockyer, she does the tyres. <laughs> <laughs> In the new lockdown, what will happen to protests? They are banned. Protests more than six. Two. No more than two. Two, yeah. To agree <laughs> about something and say they don't like it or yes. it's, a, it's wrong. Yeah. And in Britain at the moment, two people who agree on any subject is pretty good. Mm. Yeah. We demand a threesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, if that happens, the police can be called. Yeah. Regardless of which version. Hey, well, of all you it. need is one policeman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this bad news for? Not the threesome. Oh. Is it Nigel Farage? It is. Because he started a yeah. party to oppose lockdown. Yes. Well, I think he felt that the unpleasantness had gone out of the Brexit debate. <laughs> yeah. um, and he needed to inject some sort of new toxic unpleasantness. So he thought, let's argue about lockdown. <laughs> According to the Mail on Sunday, the pandemic has led to the emergence of a massive political hole. Or you can just call him Knight. <laughs> <laughs> Who's crossed with Boris Johnson? Who isn't crossed with <laughs> Boris Johnson? That is true. Tory backbenchers? Correct, yes. Mm. His own MPs have been rebelling against this new lockdown mm. this week and questioning the science. What do you think about science? Is it here to stay? <laughs> <laughs> on the whole, the data's fine. I think what they're arguing is the modelling bit. Right. Um, yes. Which, again, is, is a problem for Boris, cos he's, you know, he's pro-model on the whole. <laughs> um, but in this case, it's a bit of a worry. Those two professors, Professor Doom and Professor Gloom, who are quite a downer, really, mm. uh, when they come on, this time they said that there might be thousands of people dying a day. How should they present? Should they sing the information? <laughs> yes. Exactly. And I would say fewer graphs. I think that's because they've spent 50 billion on a graphs contract. <laughs> <laughs> what have backbenchers called for the PM to do? Resign? Yes, they want him to go. They just want him to go. Um, <laughs> they don't give the leaders very long now, do they? No. And he's been in, what, nine months? Mm. It's been a long nine it months. Feels like it feels forever. like forever. <laughs> Who is Boris Johnson himself angry with? The leaker. Yes. The yeah. details of his planned announcement on the new lockdown, uh, which forced him to deliver it um, on Saturday, two days earlier than planned. It's like a really easy game of Cluedo. The meeting is called the Quad. There's only four people there. It <laughs> was one of them. Yes. The PM, the Chancellor, Michael Gove and Matt Hancock. And then it's just Professor Gove in the library. Could not be Gove. It could He's not be Gove. a man of great integrity. <laughs> Someone in the Cabinet told the Mail that the leaker was 
a chatty rat, Matt Hancock immediately issued a denial. <laughs> 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 How did Hancock give the game away in the Commons? Did that to Matt. He did do that <laughs> quite a lot. Ian Duncan Smith went on a bit of a rant about the leak. Let's take a look. Uh, I want to say I thought the leak is appalling, uh, that the whoever did it should be sacked, strung up to dry, come here to apologise, grovelled out the door on hands and knees, uh, and beaten on the way out, frankly. Because, to be honest with you, this is appalling, what they have done. <laughs> it's no way him. <laughs> no way. It's too clever, isn't it, yes, to do that? Testing is a crucial element of the government strategy. Who were Randox, Ian? Randox, they're a laboratory firm, pharmaceutical laboratories, who were privatised. Yes. Um, and there's a government minister on the board. Mm -hmm. Tory MP Owen Patterson, who's being paid only £100,000 a year to do Yeah, that. absolutely. It's one of many firms that are run much better by having members of the Cabinet or their friends in charge. <laughs> <laughs> are they experienced at testing? Are they Randox? Are they...? No. No. Um, what are they normally? They usually make bath salts, don't they? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's an overall £12 billion that have been spent on testing and tracing. And sometimes to companies that have only been started up like about eight months ago. Yes, yes. Yeah. and have two or three people. And are called things like Honest Ron's <laughs> <laughs> Mask Funhouse. Yeah. Like that. That's one of the more um, experienced. That's right, that's actually yeah. got quite good scientific uh, data. <laughs> yeah. Why can't they ask for the money back? Because it didn't work. I don't think in the contract is any kind of, if this doesn't work, we get our money back. What you would normally have, you would put some sort yeah. of no. protection in yes. you know, for the British public, yes. the taxpaying public to say... This is beginning to sound like a riot, Roshi. <laughs> <laughs> you spend the money for the hope. <laughs> but it's not all bad news. Um, according to the Mail, fresh optimism for a jab before Christmas. Although whether there'll be enough morphine to kill us all... <laughs> 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 this is the second lockdown which began on November the 5th a dangerous date for the government to start such an unpopular policy. <laughs> <laughs> this week, the government has been criticised for awarding a £350 million test and trace contract to Randox. The company was founded in 1982 by Dr Peter Fitzgerald, a research scientist who discovered a pioneering way to get government contracts without going through a bidding process. <laughs> also, this week, Prince William revealed that he contracted coronavirus back in April, having been informed by Test and Trace last Saturday. <laughs> and so to round two, the star-spangled hammer of news. Mm. Fingers on buzzers teams. Here's the first one. <laughs> well, this has got nothing to do with America. These aren't American policemen, is my answer. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm prepared to admit this star-spangled hammer yeah. is not directly connected to American news. Anyone else want to critique the question? <laughs> no, I think he's demolished it. I'd just chuck it. All right, well, <laughs> this week, police in Guernsey have revealed a huge increase in job applications thanks to their new creative recruitment policy. What did they do to drum up more interest? There is a clue with that camera. They clearly made a campaign video. Yes. They made an action film style recruitment video, mm -hmm. which has led to 10 new recruits. Mm. Oh. Um, let's take a look. Yeah. In the guns. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's like. It's Paul. like that all the time. <laughs> I've been to Guernsey and <laughs> none of that. Happened. Imagine if you're like a Guernsey estate agent. You're like, what are they doing? <laughs> this shiz is real in Guernsey. One person told the BBC that the video made islanders appear to be violent, <laughs> raging <laughs> lunatics, yes. while others disagreed and said it portrayed them unfairly. <laughs> Where is Guernsey then? It's where you stop when you haven't got enough petrol to get to France. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a war zone, that's where it is. Yeah. TJ Hooker would be right at home oh, there, wouldn't please. he? Oh, thank enough. you. That's his yeah. bread and butter, that, that is. That's a feature length, TJ. <laughs> yeah. They're not going to cram that into 45 minutes. No. They're going to allow that episode to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think would have enjoyed the Guernsey Police video 
And I'll give you a clue who passed away recently. Not Sean Connery. As a fan of the action genre, of course Sean would have enjoyed that. Would he? Of course. <laughs> What's his connection with Guernsey? At the moment, this card. <laughs> That's the connection, Ian. Yeah. <laughs> I don't if... want to get all forensic on yeah. you, but... Please don't put too much pressure <laughs> on these segues, Ian. They do not hold up to scrutiny. Yeah. Some of this is literally, it's one thing, then it's another thing, <laughs> and then it's another thing, and then it stops. Yeah. yeah. If you're gonna... If you're gonna lean on it, it's gonna break. <laughs> OK? OK, I back off. Sean Connery <laughs> was a versatile actor, as well as playing James Bond. He was also capable of nuance and great sensitivity. <laughs> Zardos. Exactly. Still got nothing to do with Guernsey. <laughs> no, nothing. This is the rather over-the-top recruitment video made by the Guernsey police force. According to the Times, the biggest crime on Guernsey recently was that some flares were set alight in a bin. Of course, they're still wearing flares on Guernsey. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. Here's the next one. This is Cliff Richard. Is he presenting a nude version of Sutton and Sweet? No. no. Is he...? Thank you for whoever that was that laughed there. I heard a laugh come from out of the emptiness as somebody realised that somebody doing that could be a nude Sutton and Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I can have put that on my show reel. <laughs> next, to the, next to the Guernsey police video. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sweet would definitely be bad cop. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. What's that you said? <laughs> you fabricated the evidence. <laughs> this is the news that Cliff Richard has stopped swearing. What? Do you not hear this news? I love Cliff Richard swearing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's cleaned up his act, I None oh. of that filth anymore. <laughs> Cliff Richard, if he's not going to start swearing. Exactly. Isn't... That's all we know him for. Exactly. Yeah. If he's not going to drop the C bomb, I'm not going. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> what, what does Cliff do now instead of swearing all the time? Does he use substitute words? Close. A bell. So you got a swear a bell. box. It makes noises, indiscriminate noises. He does the opposite. <laughs> what he does is instead of saying them out loud, mm -hmm. sometimes I think swear words. <laughs> For example, I wish those... <laughs> the BBC would commission this <laughs> sooty and sweet show. <laughs> um, another devastating... So the, so the story is that, he, that there's Again, something that he's please not Please don't put to too know. much pressure, Armando. Yeah. <laughs> don't put... It won't take it, Armando. It will not take the something, pressure you're giving it. Something hasn't happened. That's the story. Armando, yeah. Yeah. please. And we don't right. know why, he's and Richard up. has no idea. Right. Don't, don't lean on this. Like I don't think he likes the word story. It's too strong. Yeah. Don't lean on this. His cards are blank on okay. <laughs> He's making it <laughs> Some stuff happened yeah. involving some He's person you may have heard out. of. This whole show's going down. And I'm just telling you about it. And if you don't think that's a TV show, if you want news and things have happened and satire, you're in the wrong place, yeah. Armando. <laughs> you're just speculating about what may or may not be going on in Cliff Richard's silent head. And, <laughs> and may I say, Richard, that on the BBC, speculating about what's going on Cliff Richard's head is not a good move. <laughs> People have got in trouble for that. That is. That. There's more Cliff Richard news. <laughs> <laughs> As we, we can't uh, take any more Cliff Richard news. We've not milked this cow. We're going to have the general down here in a minute. Just yeah. get on. Please. <laughs> Just let me get through this Cliff Richard section. It's too much. There's not enough. <laughs> to bring out a swearing We're album. not talking enough about Cliff. <laughs> OK. At this moment. <laughs> yeah. What else? Didn't he do this week? <laughs> it is a question about what he didn't do. Yeah. Armando. What did he reveal he will no longer be doing in his calendars? That's right, we're asking questions about what Cliff will not be doing. <laughs> it's a very wide topic. Can you think of stuff Cliff wouldn't do? I can't think of anything that he wouldn't be doing. Yeah. Did he this week invade Iraq, for example? No. I think if the rest of us don't attempt to answer the question, this bit will be over quicker. <laughs> Cliff's about to reveal his 40-second calendar, but he will no longer be posing topless. Oh, yes. He told the mirror, I suspect I've done my final topless photo. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yes. I suspect I've bought my last Cliff Richard calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Time now 
for the Missing Words Round, which yes. this week features as its guest publication, The American Magazine, the magazine oh. for American expats in Britain. Ideal for anyone who hasn't heard quite enough about America recently. <laughs> and we start with... People can now what from home using robot lobsters? Vote. <laughs> Catch crabs. <laughs> Get a degree. Win a massive contract for PPE. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All of these are on Cliff Richard's new album. <laughs> it's a view art exhibition. Uh, um, yeah. Of course. Yes, this is... Oh, sure. yeah. <laughs> This is the story that the Saatchi Gallery in London is hosting an exhibition called Lobsteropolis that can be viewed from home using remote control lobsters. Of course, the great thing about this exhibition is that you don't even have to leave your home in order to not bother going to it. <laughs> uh, next, what unexpectedly found in a cathedral in Spain this week? Beelzebub. <laughs> Mephistopheles. <laughs> Eamon Holmes, the Dark Prince. <laughs> is, is there a comma there, or is it just... No, Eamon no, Eamon Holmes, Holmes, the Dark Prince. The Dark Prince. Yeah. Yeah. Twelve horses. Final answer. <laughs> Cheeky portrait of a stonemason oh, is the answer. Yes. This week, historians at a cathedral in Galicia discovered that a stonemason who helped build the church has secretly carved an etching of himself into the wall, which has only been discovered 900 years later. Here he is. Ooh. Yeah. When it comes to uncovering historical secrets in the church, this is definitely one of the nicer ones. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, what honoured with commemorative plaque in Western Supermare? Is it Christ? <laughs> <laughs> is it Kanye Weston? <laughs> Bob Hope is the answer. Of course. This is an article from the American magazine about the legendary US entertainer who's been given a blue plaque in Britain, the Bob Hope blue plaque, brings a number of reasons to visit Western Supermare to slightly less than one. I mean, what was his connection with Western Supermare? Yeah. He wasn't born there. I bet your cards have got nothing. The cards are still going on about Cliff Richard. <laughs> Ignoring the cards right now. The cards are just saying, stay on Cliff Richard, it will get better. <laughs> so, the final scores are... Paul and Roisin, two. Ian and Armando, three. Three. Well done. On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Armando Iannucci, Paul Merton and Roisin Conaty. And I leave you with news that there's an impressive turnout for the first meeting of Nigel Farage's new anti-lockdown party. <laughs> <laughs> On a police training course in Hendon, new recruits are taught how to spot a cold-blooded psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> and in troubled times, Donald Trump seeks a comforting embrace from the person he loves the most. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Well, for more like that, see Dara O'Brien Mock the Week. Press red to watch now on iPlayer. Graham Norton is here at 10.45 with Kylie, Nicole Kidman and from the new series of The Crown, Charles and Di. Proper Royals first, an evening round at Jim and Barb's wedding planning with Denise. It's a classic coming up next.